All right. Next little sequence is just to try and warm up all around the hip joint here. So stand on one leg, and you've just warmed up the feet, so you should be able to feel a bit more connection to the ground through that foot. And lift the leg to 90 degrees here. And then just do a series of maximum flexion. Try and get the feeling of the hip flexors doing the work of drawing that thigh to your chest. You can use a tactile cue of a hand at the front of the hip joint here, if that helps you. Good. Okay, now take the leg out to about 45 degrees and repeat. Hopefully you get all sorts of interesting cramping sensations coming on doing this. Hopefully, that's what you want. That's what you got. Good, okay, now take it out to the side as much as you can without twisting and try the same thing there. Should get really cool cramping sensations in the hip doing this particular angle. Good. Okay, now you're going to do an arc where you come to the front and to the side. The front and the side. Kit, this mat is really challenging. <laughs> Good. Okay, now make it bigger. Touch here, touch here. But not really loading it up, just tapping so you're constantly balanced on that support leg. So you could do this really slowly, particularly if your balance is a bit of a challenge, that will help but try and work towards making it a bit more fluid. And don't forget about the bringing the knee up towards the chest aspect, so maximum hip flexion. And shake out. Other side. 90 degrees, so it's 90 degrees and above. That's the range we're working in. Good. Try to keep the chest lifted. Think nice, long, regal body line. Good. 45 degrees. Ideally, your support leg's knee will be straight, press straight. Think maximum activity through that support leg. And then out to the side. For me, this is by far the most crampy angle, if I can put it that way. Good. Are you aware of how much work the support leg's hip and glutes doing? Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, now try the arcing thing. Try to keep the knee above, or the hip at 90 degrees or more the whole time. Remembering that there's a huge visual component to balance, so focus your gaze just on the floor a little bit ahead of you should help. And then make the movement a little bit bigger. Just tap. And you can get a little bit of twisting happening in the pelvis as well. But you're controlling via the balance leg. Good. Arms out to the side often helps people with the balance. Okay, and then wriggle them out. Feel a bit warmer? Yeah? Okay, let's look at the knees a little bit. You're just going to stand with one leg out to the front and do flexion and extension of the knee. Just like we did with the elbows, how does that feel? What does it sound like in the knee? Is there any crunching, any creaking? You could use a tactile cue, either on the quad or the hamstrings, to feel which muscles are doing the movement. Now make it a bit more forceful, really strongly. Extend the knee, flex the knee, try and kick the heel to the buttock. And try a few with the foot pointed, see if that feels any different. So we'll do some squatting work, we'll do a whole lower body sequence tomorrow. If your knees don't bend comfortably, you're going to find those things potentially a bit challenging. All right, pause and do some knee circles. All the while you're spending a lot of time balancing on one leg, which is good, because very often this goes to Louise's point about older students. Balance is something they can't do anymore. It has to be practiced. Okay, other side. So leg out to the front, bend and straighten. So start nice and small to see how it feels, listen to the joint, and then start to put more force into it. If you wanted to work harder, then you'd simply have the leg lifted higher. Then the upper quads here, hip flexors have to do a lot more work. Try a few with the foot pointed, just because it looks prettier. Put some force into it, really strongly flex and extend. Okay, pause, do some circles. 
Sometimes I think about this as mainly coming from the ankles, because I'm adding a little bit of a foot curling action as well, or rotating, or mainly knees, or the whole complex is getting involved, hip, knees, foot as well. Go the other way. Try to keep your support leg pressed straight. And shake out. Okay, now we're going to do some swinging, but we're not going to use any balance aids. So what I mean is, you're just going to swing the leg forwards and backwards and use an opposing arm force to help with your balance. The swinging leg had the knee bent, so there's no great stretch requirement. It's just how fluid is that movement of the leg in the hip joint or not. Plus you have to decelerate it when it goes out behind you, so you don't go too far. Now you've got the coordination happening, put more effort in pulling the knee up to the front. Can you bounce the thigh off the rib cage and keep yourself balanced? Because <laughs> we used to do this up against the wall to help you, but why would you do that when you want to challenge your bounce? Good. Okay, other side. So start a bit small scale. Just work out the coordination. Coordination element to a lot of this stuff. This mat was a mistake. It's very <laughs> That's my excuse that I'm sticking to it. Keep the chest lifted. Can you keep the support leg really straight? How does it feel in the hip joint? Are there any sticking points? Any crunchy points? No? <laughs> Few more and really emphasize the hip flexion, pulling the thigh up and try and bounce it off the belly or the chest or whatever it runs into first. Good. Okay, and relax. Alright, now we're going to move into this complex a little bit more. So you're going to start in a short stance lunge, one foot to the front, one foot to the back. Feet about hip width apart. So do that now. Try to have the hips square to the shoulders. So I'm not facing this way, I'm facing towards the front knee. I'm up on the toes of the back foot. And just look back at your foot. If your foot is like this, then it's very unlikely that your hips are square. Turn the foot completely in. And then just do a series of little heel presses. Nothing else is moving, I'm just trying to press the heel down. I'm reasonably tight in the ankles and calves, so just this little movement, I get a very gentle pull into the calf. Don't worry what the pelvis is doing, just see what the ankle and calf feels about that. Now pause, heel off, back knee bent. Strongly tuck the tail, square up even more. Maintain that pelvic position, don't let it change and now try a knee straightening action and see can I get that heel down now that I'm strongly keeping the tail tucked. It's pretty unlikely unless you've got super loose hip flexors. So square hips, tuck tail and you're thinking of pressing out through the back heel. Good. Okay, now pause with the knee as straight as you can Retuck the tail, and then here's a little balance challenge. Try and do some little arcing movements where you're drawing a little semicircle with the back leg's hip. So you're going from square hip to completely open out hip with the tail tuck held on, and just explore sensations around the top of the front of the leg here. Good. So a lot of you here have done a lot of hip flexor stretching, so you're quite loose in there. Alright, and then just try the same sequence on the other side. So it's only a short start lunge, we don't want a maximum stretch to begin with. Feet are hip width apart on the floor. Look, if you have the feet a bit wider, it would be easier to balance. In the left-right sense, that's it. Square hips, but not worrying too much about tucking or untucking, and just do those little heel presses. And these are all unilateral left-right sequences, so put your attention into, is there any difference left to right in my body? Good. 
Okay, pause, strict form in terms of tug and hip flexors, square hips, strong tail tuck. Keep that held on as you try and do a knee straightening action. And do you feel a stretch through the quad hip flexor? Hip flexor? So anywhere potentially from the kneecap right up into the waist area. Okay? Don't cheat yourself. Keep the hips square and the tail tucked strongly. All right, you kind of felt it, warmed it up. Press the knee as straight as you can. Maintain your tail tuck and just some little opening out, coming back to square. Just exploring different lines around the hip flexors there, see how it feels. Again, is there any noticeable left-right difference in your hips? It might be that you feel a bit more stable one side compared to the other. All right. Shake out.